This is part 149 of ASP.NET tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss passing data from master page to content page. This is continuation to part 148 where we discussed passing data from content page to master page. So please watch part 148 before proceeding. And this is what we want to achieve in this video. Notice that we have got a search text box and a search button in the master page. Now, when we enter a search term and then once we click the search button, then we want to display all the students who have got that search term in their name and then display them within the grid view control on the content page. So basically, we are passing the search term from the master page to the content page. And when we click the search button that's present on the master page, that's when we want the search functionality to be triggered. Let's see how to achieve this. First, let's implement this search interface within the master page. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So this is our master page that we have been working with. So let's first of all include a panel control within the master page header. And let's call this uh, panel control panel search. And within the panel control, we want text search we want that to be bolded so let's include that inside a bold tag and then let's include a text box control and then a button control and let's change the ID of the text box to, to txt search and button to btn search and within the code behind file of this master page, let's include a property that's going to return the panel control. And the property has to be public. So since we are returning a, a panel control, the return type has to be panel. And let's call the property itself as search panel. And let's include just the get accessor. And let's return the panel control. And what is the ID of the panel? Search panel. I mean panel search. Similarly, let's include another public property that's going to return the search button itself. So since we are returning a button here, the return type is going to be button. And let's call the property as search button. In a bit, we'll see how we are going to make use of these properties on the content page. So return this dot btn search. And let's include one more property, which is going to return the search term that we typed into the search text box on the master page. So since we want to return the search term, the you know, data type is going to be string. And let's call the property as search term. So what do we want to return? We want to return the text that is present in txt search text box. All right, so that's it with the master page. Now, let's add a content page. And let's call this student search. We want to display the students within a grid view control within the content page. So let's drag and drop a grid view control onto the content page. And let's use master type directive on the content page so that we get a strongly typed reference to the actual master page so master type virtual path equals site dot master all right now we need to retrieve data from the database table so we'll be using this table a tbl students here is the SQL script to create and populate this table with some sample data. I'll have the script available on my blog in case if you need it. Now, the first thing that we need to do is write a stored procedure that's going to return students. You know, obviously, when we click search, you know, we are going to pass a search term. So we need a stored procedure which is going to take that search term as a parameter and then return all the students whose name contain that search term. So let's create that stored procedure, create proc, and let's, be call, let's call this SP search students. Let's include a parameter. Let's call it search term. And this is going to be of type 
and where care and let's specify the length as 50 as begin and so what do we want to do we want to retrieve all the rows and columns from TBL students table where name like we need to include the wild card so percentage and to that let's append the search term and let's append another wild card at the end all right so that's it very simple stored procedure so let's go ahead and create this let's quickly test our stored procedure to make sure it works as expected now let's say for example when I pass um, letter M then I should get all the student names uh, which contain letter M look at that there are nine of them if I pass MA as the search term we only get two students on the other hand if I pass an empty string we should get everyone back there we go alright now we need to invoke the stored procedure from our content page so within the code behind file since we are going to write some ADO.NET code here let's bring in the required ADO.NET namespaces so we need system.data we need system.data.sql client and we need system.configuration so first of all let's include a private method here and let's call it get data and to this method we are going to pass a search term and let's write the ADO.NET code here so first we need to read the connection string from web.config file so within web.config I already have a connection string that points to the SQL server on my machine and the name of the connection string is dbcs so let's read that from web.config file and for that we are going to make use of configuration manager class so configuration manager dot connection string of what's the name of the connection string dbcs dot connection string should give us that let's create a SQL connection object let's call it con equals new SQL connection let's use the connection string to create that SQL connection object now let's build the SQL command object let's call it CMD equals new SQL command so what's the name of our command it's nothing but this, this stored procedure so let's pass this name and then we want to use this connection object to execute this command now the command is actually a stored procedure so we need to tell that to the command object and we do that by using command type property and this stored procedure expects a parameter so we need to create a SQL parameter object and let's call the search parameter equals new SQL parameter we need to specify the name of the parameter and a value for it so the name of the parameter is going to be at search term and where is the value going to come from the value is coming into this method as a parameter so let's pass this parameter alright now we need to associate this parameter with the command object and to do that we use the parameters property of the command object add our search parameter alright so let's open the connection and let's execute the command so command dot execute reader so whatever result that we get back we want to set that as the data source for our grid view control and invoke data bind method we don't have to close the connection explicitly because we have wrapped the SQL connection object using this using a block so the connection will be automatically closed for us alright now let's invoke this method within the page load event so if not is post back let's invoke this method get data and you know when the page first initially loads we want to display all the students within the grid view control so let's pass null to this method 
All right, let's go ahead and run this and see if the ADO.NET code and the stored procedure is working as expected. We're going to get a runtime exception, but we'll see in just a bit how to fix that. Look at this. It gives an error stating procedure or function. SP search students expects a parameter at search term, which was not supplied. And if you look at our ADO.NET code, we are actually associating the parameter with the command object. So why are we getting this error? That's basically because, look at this, we are passing now and that's why. Okay, so what we want the stored procedure to do, if the search, I mean the CDO.NET code to do is, if the search term is null, you know, we want to replace that with an empty string. Okay, and for that purpose, let's use null coalescing operator. So basically, if the search term is null, then pass string.empty as the value for this parameter. Otherwise, if this search term is not null, then use the value that is present within this parameter. Okay, that's what this null coalescing operator does. Okay, so with this change, let's run this one more time and see if it works as expected. Okay, there we go. We got all the 10 students. Now, look at this, when we type a search term and click this button, nothing is going to happen because we haven't implemented that functionality yet. So, basically, what should happen now? First of all, look at this, the search button is within the master page. When I click this button, you know, an even handler method needs to be executed. At the moment, we don't have any even handler method associated with the search button. Okay, but then if you remember, within the master page, we've got a property that exposes that button, that returns that button, and that property is search button. So what I'm going to do within this content page is I'm going to include page init event, page initialization event, and within page initialization event, we're going to associate an event handler method with the click event of the button control. Okay, and how am I getting a reference to that button control that's present on the master page? We have that property, search button. Okay, and look at what it is returning. It's returning a button control, which is nothing but the button that is present within the master page. So to that button, associate, you know, to this click event, associate the following event handler. So search button underscore click. So when the click event occurs, this event gets executed, even handler method gets executed. Okay, so what do we want to do when this even handler method is executed? We want to invoke this get data method. Okay, so let's go ahead and invoke that. And the next thing is we need to pass the search term that we entered into this text box control. So how are we going to get that search term? Again, we have a property, okay, within the master page. So master dot search term property should give us that, um, you know, search term that we typed into that search text box, okay? So that's all there to it. Let's go ahead and run this and see if it works as expected. So there are build errors. Let's see what they are. Oh, we need to change the name of the uh, page event to page in it. Okay, so let's run this once more. Okay, so there we go. We have all the students. Let's type MA, click the button. Look at that. We only get those student names, uh, you know, which contain that search term MA. If I get rid of that, click the button, we get everybody. Okay, so very straightforward basically to pass data from the master page to the content page. Now let's say for example, you know, I have another maybe employee search page. Okay, um, basically let's look at that example as well. So here I have another table. Select star from TBL employee. Okay, now let's say we want to display these employees on another page and we want to implement search functionality there. Again, it's going to be very straightforward and it's going to be very similar. Okay, the first step is obviously we need a stored procedure, search employees. So let's call it SP search 
employees and we want to retrieve data from TBL employee where name like at the search term so let's create this tour procedure alright now let's go back to our code let's add a content page and let's call this maybe employee search and let's include the master type directive I mean look at this the steps are almost identical to what we have done when we were implementing student search and within the code behind file I'm simply going to copy paste the code that we have in a student search so these are the namespaces that we require and what I'm going to do is copy this entire code and then paste that within the code behind of our employee search okay the only thing that needs modification here is the name of the stored procedure okay what's the name of the stored procedure in this case it's going to be SP search employees okay and then obviously we need to include a grid view control so let's drag and drop a grid view control to display those employees there that's it so let's go ahead and run this now and see if this works as expected so basically it's displaying all the employees now if I type letter S then we should get all employees who have got letter S in their name okay there we go so very simple and straightforward now let's say in my application I have another page but on that page I don't want the search functionality itself okay so I don't want the search interface to be displayed in the master page is there a way to hide it absolutely and that is the reason why we have included you know all these controls inside this panel and then we have included a property within the code behind file of the master page to return that panel control so that we can turn off the visibility on a page where we don't need search functionality so let's add a page basically this is web form 6.aspx so let's say on this page we don't want search functionality first of all let's include that master type directive let's set virtual path to site.master and within the code behind file in the page load event so master dot search panel is going to return us the panel control and all we are going to do is set the visibility to false so when we navigate to this page web form 6.aspx you know we shouldn't see the search interface on this page look at that we don't have that search interface but then if I navigate to maybe employee search we should have that search interface alright that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day